the screens flicker and fry As shot dances with the light Boss tapping to the beat In this digital street Long Wars is threatened! Mend the boundaries! Protect us! Do your duty to our school! Help us, we're just on the way to McDonald's! Do you want anything? Great, yeah, no, ask Phileas, Phileas what dip does he want with his selects? Oh, don't bother asking Severus. I already know. He wants a chicken nugget happy meal, and I'll get him a McFlurry. Hey, Poppy, have you brought your muggle money? Could I just check with you to see what is the rep of the day today? All oh, right, okay, thank you. I don't like that one. Could I get a sweet chili wrap meal with large fries? Yep, what's um, I'll have. I think I'll have a Sprite, please. A Sprite. A sprite yeah, yeah. Um, could I also get some uh, a, an extra sweet chili dip? Chili, yeah. I like it spicy. Thank you, dear. Could I have some extra barbecue sauces, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right, pull the car around the corner. We'll shrink it and then operate back. Now that it is the end of term, I thought I'd show you my gym routine. Whether I am chasing Weasleys or Death Eaters, I need to be on top form. Just doing some prep for the moving staircases here and for when I have to fish students out of the lake. My back has to be strong because I'm always carrying Hogwarts on it, and my legs do too so they don't buckle under the pressure. You can call me Professor McGonagall Swole because I have to keep these guns jacked to manage the might of my magic. So jacked, in fact, I can do unassisted pull-ups. I don't know why this muggle girl insisted on helping. I was absolutely fine. Finally, some prep for when I meet Umbridge in Nocturne Alley. And that was a gym sesh well spent. Look at those McGonagall games. When things at Hogwarts are going downhill very quickly, I often feel the urge to follow suit. Obviously, I would be recognised in the Highlands of Scotland, and so I head to my local Muggle Ski Slope to keep a snow profile. And since it's nearly Halloween, I don't even have to muggle dress, which is very convenient. Now, despite being blessed with feline grace and agility, I'm not used to these silly muggle poles. But the snow must go on. It's not about how you stumble, it's about how you get back up. So you have to dust off your wizard flappers, get back on the broom, and let your magic do the talking. You've got to step up and have the McGonagall and the McGonagumption to send it every time. You raid the witch's broom. Raid the witch's broom. Even when times are tough and there's death eaters at every turn, you have to live like there's snow tomorrow. And now that that's all done and I've made a dent in the slope with my face, I'm gonna go back to Hogwarts and make a dent in my marking. Ski you later. I was tempted to say you can't be serious, but this is no time for jokes. I had got you this hat for when you were found not guilty, but I'll never be able to give it to you now. I suppose I could give it to Bellatrix, but honestly I'd rather get hit by the night bus. And I doubt it would fit on that bird nest anyway. No, serious, you and I did not always see eye to eye. Sometimes we fought like cats and dogs. Because we were. A cat and a dog. Oh, I knew right from the start that would be your form. Intelligent, loyal, and your mum was such a bitch. Considering that both of your parents had the same last name before they got married, you turned out incredibly well, and I am so very proud. Although, for a canine, can I say copycat? Nice of you to get Potter that expensive broomstick. I wonder where you got that idea from. But I'm not still bitter. I'm sure he'll name a child after both of us. Now, I've heard it on good authority that all dogs go to heaven, so you chase that stick over the rainbow bridge. Bridge, buddy. Speaking of rainbows, happy Pride Month, Wolf Star forever. That's odd. Your cousin's giving me evils. I didn't even call an Infidora. Help us. We really miss you. Few things, though. You didn't happen to write down any of your plans since you didn't tell them to anyone, did you? Because I've been talking to your portrait, and honestly, he doesn't know his ass from his elbow. I mean, I did find your diary, but it was mostly Grindledore fan fiction, and I'm not a prude, but it was pretty graphic, so I decided to give it to Miss. Don't worry, though. I've locked it away. We can't have Rita Skeeter getting her buggy mitts on it. Can you imagine the scandal? Speaking of scandal, you will never guess who has had the gall and the gumption to turn up to your funeral. The toxic, tyrannical toad is here, and she's dressed as Peppa Pig. Yep, Dolores Umbridge is currently at your funeral wearing bright pink and a Cheshire Cat grin, and I swear to Godric Albus if she coughs during your eulogy. Toadette is going in the Black Lake, and you're dead. Severus has fled, so there's no one left to hold me back. Speaking of the lake, I was thinking, first act as headmistress, I might buy another giant squid. Because you were the only one who spoke her language, who understood her, and I don't want her to feel so alone. Hey, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the squid. Mind your own damn business.
Elvis Dumbledore. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got a lot to say. There's a lot come out about you recently. Lying, manipulating, cheating, raising Harry like a pig for slaughter. Quite frankly, there is a staggering amount of evidence. So, what do you have to say for yourself? Who, pray tell, painted this man a ukulele? Now, when you said they were riding into battle, this isn't what I expected. This is how he wants to play better saddle up, because this isn't my first rodeo. I've had enough of your bull, Voldy. No more horsing around. We'll see you at the battlefield. You can bet I know the hoedown throwdown, and who's the hoe that's getting thrown? Bellatrix. Indeed. Whoa, that snake really messed him up. Hello, Severus. I know this is going to be awkward, but firstly, what happened in the Great Hall was not my fault. You, me, and Elvis were supposed to be a team, a trio, the cat, the bat, and the silly old Pratt, but no. You two were in coach together, not telling me anything, giving Two-Faced Quirrell a run for his money. And because of your boys' club, how was I to know you weren't really a turncoat tallywhacker who deserved to go gung-ho out the window? I mean, it could have been worse in the book I tried to stab you to death. But I think that's pretty understandable. Somebody had just spent in my face I was vexed. But I am feeling a lot better now I'm headmistress again. Would be nice to get a promotion without a dear friend having to be murdered, but c'est la vie. But honestly, I am gonna miss the jolly hours in the staff room reading people to filth with you. Helping each other decide which of our many black outfits we were gonna wear. Making bets on how the defense against the dark arts teacher was gonna die. Anyway, I take it back. You're not a coward. You're a sneak. But I liked you. So R.I.P. Sev, I hope your love life's better in the next one. I had to roast an urn, so I brought this for the visual. It was a struggle to separate your ashes from the rocks and rubble, so you're even more of a stone-cold slapper than you were before. You shouldn't have gotten married. I hear black don't crack. It seems less strange crumbles. Just pulling your leg, proverbially, of course, because yours got blown up. Oh, Bella, what will we do without that awful ear-splitting cackle? Rejoice is the answer, though I hope they have headphones in hell. Nothing raises a hackle like your cackle, and I don't want them to send you back. Seriously, though, you and I had a lot in common. Formidable, talented, purposeful, powerful witch. The right hands to two warring wizards. Queens on the chessboard, so to speak. The difference is you are a sadistic, spiteful scorpion with certainly more than a screw loose. And I'm a scotch bonnet that's the last piece on the board, so check me, chickpea. Oh, I've got a poem. A student wrote it for your eulogy. Here lies Bella Lestrange, and believe me, that bitch was deranged. Oh, she took on Molly, and that was a folly. She exploded and no one's complained. Oh, young talent. Last thought for your tombstone. Here lies a merciless, murderous, maniacal monster. Rest in pieces, you messy cow. Sincerely, the Longbottoms. Oh, the smiling husky on the prowl